Arrays in Ruby are ordered collections of objects. They might be anything. In this case, in the first example we'll look at, I have numbers. But it could be strings, could be more complex objects that we've created from classes. But the key here is that it's an ordered collection indexed numerically. That is, the first element has index 0, the second element has index 1, etc. So keep in mind that the first element is the zeroth, not the first, element. Let's look at an example. And as always, these files are in your working files in the Chapter 3 Ruby directory. I'm looking here first at arrays.rb. You can see here on line 3 that I've defined a three-element array called r1. It's got square brackets, opening and closing, and it's got commas between the elements. So this is an array with three elements. The zeroth element is 10, the first element is 20, and the second element, that is the element with index 2, is 30. And I can put to the screen R1 on line 4. And if I look at that, here you see that the Ruby command line tool simply prints it out each on a separate line, 10, 20, 30. On line 10, I define another three-element array, R2. This time I have strings, Brian, Jane, and Teddy. And I can put those to the screen. Here you can see Brian, Jane, and Teddy, again, each on its own line. On line 17, I exactly do the same thing that I did on line 10. The variables R3 and R2 will be the same, but I use a little bit different syntax. On line 17, I create R3 as array.new, and then I set each of its elements individually. On line 18, R3 at 0. That's how we say that, the square bracket, 0 square bracket. R3 at 0 equals Brian. R3 at 1 equals Jane. R3 at 2 equals Teddy. And then I put to the screen on line 21, R3, and you can see that I get the same thing, Brian, Jane, Teddy. Lastly, on line 23, a quick example of accessing a specific element, in this case of R3, the element with index 1. Second element of R3 is, and then I interpolate, get the value of R3 at element 1, and it prints to the screen, second element of R3 is Jane. Now I'm looking at the file arrays setting elements.rb. A few different ways in Ruby to set elements of an individual array. You can see on line one that I've defined an array r with five elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So the zeroth element is initially 10. On line three, I set r at zero equal to negative 10. That would change what had been 10 to now negative 10. On line 10 of my file here in the code, I can use a negative index to change the element that had been 40, that is the element at the 0, 1, 2, 3 position, to be negative 40 by using r at negative 2. Again, that's on line 10. Notice that a negative element counts backwards from the right-hand side. The negative 1 element would be 50 in this case, the negative 2 element is 40, etc. A couple different ways I can refer to groups or ranges of elements. On line 17, you can see that I say, let r at 1, 2 be negative 20, negative 30. And you notice Ruby allows a little bit of shorthand there that I don't have to specify the square brackets in this case. But what I'm saying there is r1, 2 means find the element in position 1, and including that element, set two elements total, that's the comma 2, to be negative 20, negative 30. So after line 17, I would have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 for the individual original array. And then lastly, note that I can use a range on line 24. r at 0 dot dot 3 equals 1, 1, 1, 1. That says, including the element from 0 up to and including the element at position 3, set those values to be 1. So upon completion of this code, the array would have values 1, 1, 1, 1, 50. Similar sort of syntax applies in getting elements, that is, if I want to access, retrieve the elements from an array. This is the file arrays getting elements.rb. And again, on line one, I have initial array set to the five elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And as we've seen before, I can simply access them with the square bracket. Similarly to how I set them on line 9, I can access the next to last element with r at negative 2. I can access the three elements starting at index 2, that is starting at element 30, with the on line 15 syntax r at 2, 3. 
And lastly, I can use a range there on line 21. R at 2 dot dot 3 means the elements from index 2 inclusive up to and including the element at index 3. So that would return 30 comma 40. And lastly, because it's so common, let's take a quick look at how I can use arrays to return values. Very simple example, but we'll see more complex examples as we work through Rails in this course. But I could define a method there on line one called return vals. And let's say I need to return a collection of things. It's not simply returning a string, perhaps, or returning a Boolean true or false, or returning an integer. But I need to return a collection of things say, a list of people or a list of products. Well, that's going to be something we do quite often. And here's a very simple method, return vals, the file arrays as return values, .rb. I can define this method return vals, which returns one, two, three, four. If on line five I put that to the screen, I would simply be putting to the screen the array one, two, three, four, that four element array. Keep in mind, a few different ways to access and to set elements in arrays as we saw with simple square brackets with negative indices, specifying the index and the number of elements to include, or with the dot dot range syntax. But arrays in Ruby, as in other languages, are ordered collections of objects starting with index zero.